Welcome everyone, my name is Christy Arzola and I'm a watercolor artist. Today I thought it would be fun for us to paint a tulip together. Before we get started, please keep an open mind. We are here to learn and to practice, no comparing allowed. We each have a different level of experience and it's through practice that we'll get better. I've listed the materials in the video description for your reference. The first thing we need to do is prepare our watercolor paper. Today I'll be working on a 5 by 7 inch watercolor block. A watercolor block includes multiple sheets of paper and it's held together with adhesive on all four sides. This ensures minimal buckling while I paint. If you do not have a watercolor block, you may tape a sheet of watercolor paper to a plastic cutting board. Use a 6 by 8 inch piece of paper to measure and mark your 5 by 7 inches. You can then use painter's tape to secure in place. I make my own stencils out of cardboard that's around a house and I just trace and reuse these to ensure my paintings are a standard frame size. After your watercolor paper is prepped, you'll need to draw the flower using soft pressure with a pencil. If you're not confident in your drawing skills, you can transfer the image. Simply print your reference photo to the size of your painting. Use a pencil to rub graphite on the back of the image and then place the photo directly on top of your watercolor paper. Secure it in place with tape and then trace the image using a ballpoint pen. Once your flower is drawn, you can apply masking fluid to the edges of your flower. Masking fluid is a liquid that dries with a latex finish. It creates a protective barrier and resists the watercolor paint. It's completely optional. Here's an example. I've applied masking fluid in a teardrop shape on my watercolor paper and allowed it to dry. I've now applied wet watercolor paint and allowed that to dry. Now I can simply remove the masking fluid with either a finger or a rubber cement pickup and you can see that the masking fluid has protected that area of my painting and resisted the watercolor paints. Now that our flower is drawn out, let's prepare our paint colors. Remember, the reference photo is there for inspiration only. You're the artist. Choose colors that appeal to you. These are the colors that I've put together. Use your paint at home and get as close as possible. You don't have to be exact. Just remember, if you like vibrant colors, use more paint and less water. If you prefer pastel colors that are light value, add more water. Regardless of how light or dark you want your colors, remember, watercolor paints should be watery. Now let's begin painting. I'm going to start by applying some clean water to the background of my flower. I'm not going to apply it real evenly because I am going to go for a more loose style that has some playful organic edges. If you do not have masking fluid on your flower, just be very slow and methodical when you get up close to your flower with your water and try not to go into the flower shape. Since I have masking fluid on the edges of my flower, I'm able to move a little more quickly and efficiently. I've also applied masking fluid to the stem of my flower. I'm going to do my best to keep my flower straight as, so I don't cause confusion while you guys are painting, but feel free to rotate your flower to make it easier for your hand to get into certain areas. So I've applied water to the background. You can see that it's pretty irregular. I don't have, you know, a smooth coverage and I'm not going all the way to the edges. And I'm now going to start applying color that I think will just add additional interest to my piece. I know blues are complementaries to orange, so I'm going to start by adding some blues right next to my flower. 
just to add some interest. I'm also going to add some sap green. to imply grass in the background. And I have a paper towel handy so I can dab away paint if it ends up in an area where I don't want it. I can also put paint on my brush and use a secondary brush to bang against, creating some more splatters in the background. This is just very playful. I can do the same with water as well. So right now I'm slowing down and I'm taking a look at the colors and how they're mingling in the background and what shapes they're making. At the very top edge I can see that I have a very organic, irregular shape that I think is very playful and complementing to the subject. Down here I haven't quite achieved that same effect but I do like this shape over here. So I'm going to continue to build and I'm just going to slowly pause on occasion to make sure that I don't go too fast. Currently I'm just kind of using a dry brush to soak up any big puddles. Now I'm going to go to a darker green that I've mixed up. I'm going to add some additional splatters. I still have my paper towel handy so I can dab away any colors that end up in the flower that I do not want. I can also use clean water to make sure that the color doesn't stain those areas of my flower. So right now I have some wonderful blues and greens on this air or this side, but I don't have much variety of color over here. So I'm going to grab a mauve color that I've mixed up. I'm going to make sure it's a lighter value. I'm currently just adding additional water to it, testing it out. I'm going to add some of this color in the background. I can now use just clean water on my brush to kind of push and pull this color creating a more unique shape. I can also use clean water to splatter into these areas to kind of help make it look a little bit more loose. I can also add some water down here to break up this color. So now I've got a really playful top edge and now I'm just going to work on this lower left corner. I have a leaf that goes through this area. So I'm going to start by grabbing more of a teal color that I've mixed. And I'm just going to drag this color through 
the area where the leaf is. I feel like I need to make some of these colors go off the edge so it's not so straight. I'm going to do the same up here, maybe with my blues. Then I can take water and drag the color out. So I'm kind of playing with positive and negative space right now. So the positive space is going to be the paint that I'm applying and the negative space is going to be the white of the paper that's in between my paint colors. So here we've got some negative space and here we've got some positive space. So I'm trying to kind of create some interesting shapes to kind of break up the background. So it's just kind of fun to look at. Applying some teal over in this area. To get more vibrancy. apply some more sap green on the opposite edge of this stem so it looks like this green continues behind. I love adding splatters. It's just a nice fun way to loosen up and be a little more playful. Right now I'm just slowing down and asking myself what else I want to add. I think I'm going to add some blues over here. With clean water on my brush, I can kind of push and pull this color. Again, paying attention to my positive and negative space. I want to make sure I have contrast between my flower and my background, so I am trying to be aware of the amount of dark colors I have right up against my flower, just to make sure that the two components pop once complete. Now I know by experience that yellows and greens and blues overlap really nicely. So I'm going to add some yellows. I'm going to bring some of my teals back for this leaf. Maybe get some yellows up against this lower edge of the stem right here. Trying to break up my shapes using water by kind of pushing and pulling the colors around. 
I have some pooling up against the edge here where I've got a large puddle so I'm just going to use a dry brush that's clean to dab the surface of that puddle to soak it up I'm wiping it off on the sponge you can use a paper towel if you don't have a sponge couple last splatters I feel like this background is really playful and I'm liking the direction it's going. Now I'm going to be a little bit more methodical and my goal is just to kind of add a little bit more values in my background. So I'm just using a small brush I just want to kind of push some of my values to be a little darker. I don't want to make polka dots. I'm just trying to think of color balance. If I have a little bit of red here, I want at least a small splash in other areas of the painting. They don't have to be as large. Alright, and I think I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and then we can remove the masking fluid and begin the flower. Alright, now that the background is dried, I can go ahead and take this opportunity to add additional details to the background if I choose or I can begin my flower. I think for now I'm going to let my background be and I don't want to overcomplicate it. I'm going to bring detail to my flower first and then from there I can choose to add additional details. So I'm going to use a rubber cement pickup. If you don't have one of these, just rub the masking fluid off with clean fingers. But I'm going to use this rubber cement pickup just like an eraser. And I'm going to pick up all this masking fluid. Alright, so one thing I like about using a rubber cement pickup is the masking fluid wants to attach itself to the pickup, which is really nice because then you don't have flakes of masking fluid sitting on top of your painting surface, which can be a little irritating and messy. Okay, now I can go ahead and get started on the flower details. 
Now I'm going to try and deliberately be a little bit more loose. Those of you that have seen my paintings before know that I am not a naturally loose painter. I tend to like to go for a lot of details. So right now I'm just using some clean water to apply in the tulip area and I'm making sure to really slow down up against the edges. First layer of water always gets absorbed really quickly so I'm making sure to do at least a couple layers to make sure that the water has a nice gloss to it but I don't want the water to be so thick that it's a big puddle. I want to still be able to see the texture of the paper through the water. And there should be a shine to the water. If you're losing a shine that means it's already drying and you should probably do a second layer of water. Okay, now looking at my reference photo, I have a lot of whites and real subtle yellows towards the base of the tulip and then I get to stronger, more vibrant oranges as I move to the tip. So I'm going to use just a little bit of lemon yellow. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see this better. So this is just a real subtle lemon yellow that I'm applying. I can also make a really subtle orange by adding more water. My puddles have been sitting for a little while, so I'm going to mix them up, make sure the pigment hasn't settled to the bottom, get a nice vibrant color. My eyes are constantly going back and forth between my reference photo and my painting so I know where to put the colors. I'm not going too fast. Most of art is all about training your eyes to see values, shapes, colors, and it's going to take some time. So be patient with yourself. Now I'm going to get into some smaller areas, so I'm going to switch to a small brush just so I can apply my color into these small shapes a little more confidently. My goal right now is not to achieve a level of high detail. I just want to get some base colors in the correct areas, and then I'll be doing some layers of details on top. So I'm just slowly going up to my edge.
All right, I don't want to go too much further than this. If I were to start my stem right now, my greens would actually bleed into these really white, light yellow areas, which would ruin my light direction. So I'm going to do this stem separately once this area dries. So right now, I figure this is a good amount of base color. If I want, I can add a little bit of mauves into this shadowed area if I still have a shine left to work with. But if you're already losing your shine and it looks like your paper is starting to dry, then you may want to just allow it to dry 100% before applying more layers of color. Alright, I'm just going to let this dry and then we can move on to the next step. Alright, now that my color has fully dried, I can begin applying layers of color on top. So I'm going to go to my Vibrant Orange and I'm going to create this Petals Edge. I'm just painting wet on dry and then I'm going to take a damp brush and I'm going to kind of drag that color out so it looks more like a gradient going from dark to light. Now I'm going to create some edges for the petals that are folding right here. I'm going to use a darker orange. And a damp brush. I'm going to take just a damp brush with clean rotter up to the edge of the orange that I just applied so that the color kind of softens. If I'm getting any blooming from too much water on my brush, I can just go back through and add some orange paint. Now I need to stay away from the areas that are wet and I want to make sure that I don't allow those to touch so I can get some definition. I don't want them all blending together and losing the shape that I've created. So in the meantime while these areas are drying I can move down to this section here and add some definition in that area. damp brush handy so I can just kind of pull and soften the color. And again I don't want to get too close to this area with my damp brush because I don't want to lose that definition. I have to give it some space so it dries. We do have some shadows from the stem that are going across the base of the flower. So the shadow starts pretty central. 
and it comes straight out and it also curves along the side here. So I'm using just a really diluted teal color which was my cerulean blue and sap green and I'm using a damp brush to just soften this inside edge with water. If I feel like I don't quite have as much color as I'd like, I can add another layer. And I'm just going to let that dry. If I want, I can drag this edge of the shadow out towards the stem so it's a little more gradual. Now I can work on some of the shadows that are overlapping this petal here. I'm going to take some of my orange and mix it with a little bit of the mauve color. So it's a little bit more of like a rusty orange. Right now I'm giving my eyes time to kind of see where I need to apply the color. And if you look closely at your reference photo, you'll see where these shadows are. I'm just going in with a damp brush to soften the edges. Using a damp brush to pull that color out so it's a little bit more gradual. Creating those gradients. I'm going to allow that area some dry time. I can return to these areas because they have already dried and I can continue to add details. So for example, if I want to push the contour of this petal that's kind of curling under, I can add a little bit of that mauve color over top and I can use clean water to soften that inside edge. You have to use real soft pressure so you don't lift those underlying layers. If they do lift, try not to stress about it. It's just going to mean that it looks like a painting and that's okay. We're just here to learn. So I'm just taking some damp water over some of these edges to soften their appearance. Now I can return to some of these petals down here since they've had some time to dry. I know one petal is right in the center here. can add some more mauve colors towards the bottom edge of this petal again to give that contour so it looks a little more three-dimensional. I'm going to grab some more oranges Going to darken up this edge 
make it a little bit more vibrant. One of the biggest mistakes I see people make when they're using watercolors is they don't allow enough dry time in between sections. You have to really hop around your subject and allow dry time so that you get more definition and details in the end product. So I'm going to allow this to dry. If I need to speed it up I can just use a blow dryer. Alright, now that that has had some time to dry, I'm going to continue adding some details. I have to add a little bit more definition through the center here with my mauves. So I'm going to grab that color, make sure it's not too dark. And I'm going to rotate this painting so it's a little easier since I'm right-handed. And I'm going to put this mauve color right up against this edge. And I'm going to take a damp brush that doesn't have dripping water. I'm just going to pull this color out to create a gradient. So this is edge softening again. Gives it a little bit more definition. I also have some soft mauves in the top section here. Taking a damp brush, softening those edges, pulling upwards at the top, bottom, and side. I'm going to add some layers of orange down here. bit of mauve where there should be a shadow from the overlapping petals and then I can continue with my layers of orange now there is a little bit of like water dew on the flower surface from the reference photo I'm not going to go to that level of detail on this I'm just focusing on the flower. Alright, so I can't paint anything next to the area that's wet, but I can add some additional shadows down in this area. So one of the shadows we have is from the overlapping petals on the underside here. I can use a little bit of cadmium yellow to create a little bit of a shadow. A 
again use real light pressure when you're adding layers. And remember to hop around to get all those details. I'm grabbing some of my orange and coming up from this corner we have some shadows. Real soft pressure with your brush. Try not to gouge your painting and those layers that you've built up. This area has had time to dry, so I'm going to rotate my painting again and I'm going to layer some oranges right in here to kind of darken that area up. And using real soft, soft pressure with my brush, I'm going to soften those edges. So we're starting to get more form. These oranges back here are really vibrant, so I'm having to do lots of layers in order to get that value. By selectively pushing your darks, you're going to really build up that contrast and make your painting look a little more three-dimensional. This area has now dried, so I can continue to add layers to build up the contrast between these petals. I've put down some of the mauve. And I'm just going to soften the lower edge of that stroke so it gives a little bit more gradient to it. Do the same on this edge as long as I didn't bring the water too close. I'm going to add some more layers of orange. I really want there to be some contour.
Now I'm just taking my time to study my painting and ask myself where else I can add values where I'm not going to run into a wet area and have it all blend together. These are just some real soft oranges in this area. Using water to pull the colors out. I'm going to take some cadmium yellows and this lower section of the petal is being backlit by the sun so I'm going to get some more vibrant yellows in here. And I'm starting to feel like the cadmium yellow might be a little too dark. So what I can do is I can use a paper towel to kind of pick that up and switch to a lemon yellow. So it's a little more vibrant. I feel like I'm getting to a place where I need to hit it with the blow dryer again just to ensure I don't mess anything up. Okay, so now my tulip has dried and I've got some additional details I want to add. I have some reflective color that's right along this top edge of this petal. I have a sharp shadow through this area that I need to establish and I also need to bring more oranges up into this area. So let's go ahead and start with the reflective color. I am going to dilute my teal so it is just a real soft value. And right along this top edge of the curvature, I'm going to bring in that teal using water to soften that lower edge. And now I'm going to take some of my mauve, mix it with a little bit of blue so it has more of a purplish tint. I'm going to drag this color out with my damp brush through the top and bottom. Now I'm going to add a little bit of clean water throughout this area just to make sure I don't get any hard edges. And I'm going to add some thin washes of orange. Allow that to dry. Use some of my lemon yellow and add 
add some highlights. I don't want it to get too dark because I do want there to be contrast. While this area is drying, I can't do the shadow here, so I'm going to move into these petals down at the tip and again add more layers. I'm going to use a cadmium pale hue. So I'm just layering in some cadmium red pale hue and softening the edge so again I can push that contrast. layering in some orange. If I want, I can add some of this cadmium red pale hue at the top here to really push the contrast. Alright, this area has had some time to dry. Now I can add that shadow. I also have more oranges here. Softening this bottom edge. Going to add some lemon yellows up top here. I'm allowing my eyes some time to kind of figure out what the next step is. I have a small hint of orange for a petal that's behind here. 
or even a cadmium yellow would work. So I'm going to hold my brush up vertically, put minimal pressure. Kind of hint towards this petal behind. Now if I want, I can do my stem. I'm going to first apply clean water to my stem. I'm not going all the way to the outside edges because I don't want to accidentally get water in my background. I'm trying to keep it within the stem itself. Now I'm going to use my sap green. Now I'm going to use my dark green. And for the sake of my hand and the way my hand naturally arcs, I'm going to rotate the painting so it's a little easier for me. Stem comes into the flower a little bit, and I'll do that in a, just a sec. I'm going to try and keep the very top edge of my stem to be just water so that I have that contrast. That way it stands out from a distance. Now for the base of the stem, comes into the flower. I'm adding a little bit of the mauve over top of my dark greens just so I can create more contrast. I can also add more definition in the leaf here. So I'm returning to my teal. So I can get that leaf in for the flower. I look closely at my stem, I can see that it's starting to dry and I've got that nice white edge, but to make it a little bit more gradual, I'm just going to lightly scrub that line with water so it's not so harsh.
and to really push the contrast on the bottom edge of that stem, I can do another layer of my dark green. I've added a little bit of mauve to it. Get that contrast. Just a damp, clean brush. Soften that edge. From this point, I'll let you guys do any additional finishing touches, but I hope this was helpful. Enjoy!